All right, we're fixed to embark on the studio tour here in Universal Studios Hollywood. We've never had the opportunity to do this because they don't have this at Florida. In Florida. That's my favorite view. Posted by Jimmy Fallon. World famous studio tour. Here's where we go. If you do uh, have anybody in your party whose feet do not quite touch the ground, please move them to the center of the area seat area now, center of the seating area now, rather than on the sides. Before we get too wild out there, we are going to be moving a rapid 1,500 rotations per minute on these wheels also known as five miles per hour, but it gets pretty bumpy up there and I've heard we get up to nine, all right? And let's take off onto the back line. As I said, my name is Rose. I am your tour guide today. And I have a co-host today. He is the one and only host of The Tonight Show on yeah, NBC. Yeah. And he has his show, That's My Jam, Jimmy Mr. Fallon. Jimmy Fallon. Oh, hey there. You made it. Welcome to the Universal Studio Tour. I'm Jimmy Fallon. I'll be making sure that you get through this experience in one piece. You've got the very best guy. Rose. And the greatest driver. Simon. You're the best. I love it. Even though... Rose. Okay, five bucks. Bye. I knew you guys were excited to get on the tour, but first, a few safety rules. Ah, uh, yes, Jimmy. Thank you for the reminder. First, if you need guest assistance or have a medical emergency, or if you drop something of value off the side of the tram or have any sound or video issues, reach up and grab the red e-cord that runs along the center of the ceiling of the tram, and I'll be back to assist you as soon as it is safe to do so. Otherwise, during the entire tour, please stay seated and keep your arms and legs inside the vehicle at all times. Remember to use the red cord above your head if you need any assistance. The studio is private property, and if at any time during the tour you drop your phone or just can't wait to use the restroom, pull the cord and remain seated. Please, no smoking of any kind during the tour. Be prepared. Our tour today features loud noises, sudden tram movements, fire effects, and many water effects. You'll want to have your cameras out for great photo opportunities, but keep an eye on them so that they don't get wet. Finally, for your safety, and those around you, please do not use selfie sticks while you are on board. And now we are off on our great adventure. Universal Studios is, was created by Carl Lemley, and he is the reason we are able to explore these back lots today. He founded the studio in California in 1914, although first he opened it in New York in 1912. On your left, we are passing Soundstage 12, which has the voice logo on it. That was one of the first, that was the first soundstage ever constructed on the studio lot. He wanted Universal Studio to be, like, be the strangest city in the world. So that includes things like building. Sound stages became important in 1927 when audio was out added to the sound, excuse me, when audio was added to the filmmaking art form. Let's look at a couple projects that filmed in that sound stage. <laughs> But what exactly is a soundstage? It's essentially a warehouse space that has nearly soundproof walls, about 98% soundproof, which helps productions record the very best audio. Here is a still image of what the inside of a soundstage looks like. You may also notice that there are not very many windows. Having control of light as, as well as having control over audio are very important for productions in order to get the very best
best quality image and sound for their project. But we've had a lot of projects in our sound stages. More recently, we've had Bel Air filming in our sound stages. If you're not familiar, Bel Air is the dramatic retelling of the 90s sitcom Fresh Prince of Bel Air. And lucky for us, two of the stars of the show, Ali Sholatin and Jabari Banks, recorded this message to share. Can you keep up your water when you get it? Well, so what is you put egg on, on the cheese, you put cheese on the eggs, on the cheese, it's fine. Whoa, I'm going to say something earlier. I don't know, it's got to be a lot. Hey, we could probably fit the whole Bel Air casting crew in there. No, we got to get one of these for the mansion. <laughs> and for sure. Yo, lucky for y'all, the big family mansion lives right here on the Universal lot. Right. Some of Bel Air's most pivotal scenes yeah. have been filmed right here. Jabari, what have been your most memorable moments? Oh, I don't know. I mean, there's so many to choose from. You know what? I love the boy yourself when Will first enters, and at that moment, his life changes forever. What about you? Well, ooh, the Bel Air Academy gym set is here, too, and I remember you having to sit in that cold ice bath for hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was real. Oh, I still can't feel my toes. No, but seriously, my favorite part of this life is the talented crew and putting that wardrobe, makeup, set design, props, and transportation. Oh, yes. No, transport was the best. And you got the sweetest flash for us to play with. Just speaking of, if we're going to get a ride like this, we'd better go talk to Transco now and let these people get back to our tour. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. As long as I get to drive. Oh, not if I got the keys. Jump on the phone. Oh, man. Those two talk about a lot in that clip, the different departments that help bring a project together. But everything needs to be organized before you actually end up on set. And that phase of production is called pre-production, and it happens in these studio bungalows. For example, Alfred Hitchcock had his offices here when he worked for Universal. During his time with us, he directed Marnie, Psycho, and The Birds. On the left, we also have our Will and Grace sound stages. They were dubbed that name after the final season of the sequel series of Will and Grace, filmed right in there. Lopez vs. Lopez, starring George Lopez and his daughter, Mayan Lopez, also filmed in that soundstage, and both filmed in front of live studio audiences. One thing that's different about this soundstage compared to our others is that there are offices attached. So if they are doing a filming with an audience and a joke just doesn't hit quite right, the writers can rework it and run on down to the studio, hand it off to the director, and try a new spin on the joke. We're heading into our Metro sets now and my buddy Jimmy loves this place. So I'm gonna pass it over to him. Hey everyone, welcome to New York. I got my start right here in New York on Saturday Night Live. This is actually my old neighborhood. What's that mom do up here? That old woman. Tough lady. This is my favorite hot dog guy. Hey buddy, how's it going? Remember me? No. <laughs> Just like old times. Gotta love New York City. Hey, I'm walking here. I'm walking here. Hey, it's cool guys. I was just, you know, I was just walking there. So it's not exactly New York, but a lot of times when you see New York in the movies, it was shot right here on the Universal Metro sets. If you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. Even if you make it here on the Universal lot. Our Metro sets have been used for a number of cityscapes. My personal favorite is when it was used in the pilot episode of Quantum Leap, starring Raymond Lee, and it looked like 1970s Philadelphia, because that is my hometown. On your left, this may seem like a familiar sight. This is Courthouse Square, where the Back to the Future films had some of their key climactic moments. Let's take a trip down memory lane with Bob Gale and Christopher Lloyd. It was actually the back lot of the Courthouse Square that inspired the entire climax to Back to the Future. I had seen something in the clock tower on that ledge. It was a ledge about that wide, and I was standing inside, looking at the ledge, and I already had the vertigo. I just thought there's no way in the world, no way I'm going to stand on that. I was up there for quite a while. Of course, I had a cable. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
You may notice that Courthouse Square looks a little different today compared to some of the clips that you saw. That's because there's been a number of iterations of the Courthouse Square over the years. In fact, it became a popular spot and very recognizable from Back to the Future. And directors came in and said, well, I don't know if I can film there because people will be watching my movie and they'll start thinking about Back to the Future. And no director wants that. So there have been a number of different looks for Courthouse Square. Recently, Bruce Almighty filmed there. Also, it was used as the town square in the television series Ghost Whisperer, starring Jennifer Love Hewitt. The great thing about this space, our metro sets, is that they don't only need to be used for cities or small towns, you can build anything in here. For example, American Ninja Warrior built their most recent uh, obstacle course right here for their latest season of the show. Let's take a look at that process. Hey Studio Tour, this is Akbar Baja Villanueva, and did you know that we filmed American Ninja Warrior right here on New York Street? In fact, we built the entire course in just a few days. Take a look. You know who would be amazing at American Ninja Warrior? King Kong! So let's take a visit to Skull Island from Peter Jackson's film. It's the original King Kong that, that made me want to direct movies. I saw that movie on TV when I was about eight or nine years old. And I wanted to become a filmmaker. I like films that just take you away from your real life and sweep you up in the future. Kong literally does that. I mean, you're on board a ship, you're sailing to a lost island, you encounter monsters and creatures from you know, prehistoric times. So I was thrilled to be able to invite me back to Skull Island. That's cool. We are going to head into Skull Island, but please do stay seated and hold on to your personal items and get those 3D glasses ready.
exceptional driver, and I too am pretty crafty, but I don't know if we would have gotten out of there without Kong's help. So let's all say thank you, Kong, in three, two, one. Thank you, Kong! Well done, everybody. And I should give a shout out to the team at Weta Effects who made King Kong 360 3D possible. They brought Kong to life on that ride, but also on the big screen. They're a post-production company specializing in animation and CGI, or computer-generated imagery. They've actually won seven Academy Awards for their work in the film industry. Directions, there's creatures coming at them, you're seeing Kong from this side, and the T-Rex is from the other side. Working on a movie, we always want to work with people who are looking straight ahead of from the shop that we're working on. Here you have to take into account that people are looking in all directions. Also, one of the things about this, while I'm the movies that we're used to working on, there's no cuts, because it's one giant shot, this tram that's driving them along through Skull Island this is where the camera's from. This ring represents the where the screen is 10 meters away. We're really creating about 50 minutes of a feature film. That amount of visual information, that number of pixels, can present you into the audience. It's a hell of a ride. It is quite a ride. And speaking of, we're going to check out some other cool rides. This is our first picture car stop. So check them out and pick out your favorite vehicle. created by Paramount. It looks pretty legit, right? It is actually modified using plywood and PVC pipe to make it much, much lighter. Picture cars are important because they help to set a time and place for the film. But you also get to learn a little bit about the character who drives the car based on the car that they have in the movie. And that's true in all sorts of places, even in the tropical wilderness, like in Jurassic Park. Welcome to Jurassic Park. Yes, welcome. This is our Jurassic Park area, and we should have some dinosaur... Well, okay, the dinosaurs are not in their cages. I'm really sorry. Um, well... Anyway, um, there is the mobile lab on the left side. That is from the Jurassic Park Lost World film. It was a big hit. And you can tell that our greens department does a great job combining natural greens and artificial. Oh my goodness. The dinos are out of their cages. That's where they are. I am so sorry. Simon, maybe you can call headquarters and let them know that the dinos got out. Uh, they're all actually really nice, though. Even the Spinosaurus here at the end, they also a big part. We have actually been training our dinosaurs for 30 years now. The very first Jurassic Park film came out in 1993, believe it or not. So our dinos have been getting trained for the past three decades. Some of the most iconic and uh, long-lasting dinosaurs in Hollywood. One of the really great things about the Jurassic Park series as a whole is the way that they combine digital effects and practical effects to get their overall look. We've talked about digital effects a little bit already. That's stuff like animation and CGI, something that a team at Weta Effects might create in post-production. There's three phases of production. I told you about pre-production. That's when you get everything organized before you arrive on set. Then when you're on set, you are in production. And then after you film everything, it is post-production where you edit it all together and add your soundtrack and all of that good stuff. 
So practical effects happen during production when you are on set. They are live in action captured by the camera. So we're rolling into our old Mexico sets now where we are going to experience some practical effects in action. So have your wits about you, take in your surroundings and see if you can spot some practical effects happening as we head in here. Oh, there's some noises. Oh, some thunder. And we've got some lightning, which you can see against those walls there. So if you've got some thunder, we've got some lightning, we're going to need a little bit of rain, I think. The lightning is created by strobe lights, and the rain is created by a sprinkler system. Those are two fairly low-cost ways to have a high impact on your film. And we're lucky to be going through here during the day because the sun is shining through those water droplets, making them much easier for us to see. And if it's easier for the human eye to see it, it's also easier for the camera to see it. So when you film at night, you have to have a good plan in place to figure out how to illuminate those droplets. But practical effects range from small to large. Oh, look at the water right now. did have a stunt double there. No real Paul Giamatti's were hurt in the making of the film. We're rolling into our western sets now, and on the left there is a tavern from the film Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. The door is open, it's got greenish blue columns. That is where Leonardo DiCaprio sat and was to Dino for one of his scenes. We actually call our western sets six points because when they were originally constructed there were six different roads that all converged into one point, kind of like a pinwheel. This was very effective when filming during the silent film era because that meant that six different movies could film at the same time. They just needed to go off on a different street. And because it was the silent film era, they didn't need to worry about their audio conflicting. Also, if the sheriff told somebody to get out of town, they could just walk around to another street and be in a whole new western town. This was very efficient, and Carl Lindley was actually able to release 200 individual western films within the first year of opening that space. During that time, he would also allow people to purchase tickets and come watch movies being made. But once audio was added to the filmmaking art form, that became a little more difficult. But we still like to keep that tradition by having live studio audiences. In the sound stages in this back part of the lot, The Voice is filming its 24th season with us. Niall Horan, Reba McIntyre, Gwen Stefani, and John Legend are all coaches this year. Another bread and butter genre for the company was the monster movie. On Park Lake, we filmed the creature from the Black Lagoon. It was meant to look like the Amazon River, so let's see how they did. <laughs> Well, the water looks pretty good, but that creature looks pretty scary. But you know what else scares me? Even more than monsters, considering the afterlife. Fortunately, Kirsten Bell actually makes it a lot of fun in her show, The Good Place, which filmed here in Little Europe. You, Eleanor Shellstrom, are dead. Cool. This location, the afterlife, come on. I've never, ever seen this. You're nothing 
I'm not supposed to be here. I'm pausing here because immediately on the left with that blue door and their red uh, trimming is the yogurt, yogurt, yogurt shop. So if you look on the screen and then look over to your left, you'll see that they are pretty familiar. Of course, it does not have yogurt, yogurt, yogurt on it at this time because it does not need to be a yogurt shop. But it did for that project, so we decorated accordingly. On the right, we are passing the Court of Miracles. That is where the very first Hunchback of Notre Dame movie was filmed. It's actually hitting its 100 year anniversary this year, which I think goes to show the longevity of Universal Studios as being a key player in the filmmaking industry from the very beginning. Our little Europe sets were also used for a number of other monster movies like Frankenstein, Dracula, and The Mummy. Universal's actually been credited with creating the creature feature, that very specific type of film. So we hold our monsters near and dear to us forever. We are about halfway through, so please do remember to stay seated through the entire tour. The studio is private property, and if you drop your phone or just can't wait to use the restroom, pull the red cord to get my attention, and I will be back to assist you. But do remain seated on the tram. As I said, we hold our monsters near and dear, but monsters change. They come in all different size, shapes, and forms. So we are gonna go visit one of our more modern marine monsters. Perhaps you're familiar with the Steven Spielberg film, Jaws. We are gonna be making our way through Amity Island. And if you don't recall Jaws very clearly, perhaps this will remind you. One of the key players in the Jaws production team was named Verna Fields. She was one of the producers on the film and was responsible for creating the eerie type of vibe that the film has. This shot, I know it's a little dark out there, but I, you can hopefully get the gist of it. In this situation, it looks like we are watching this more from the shark's perspective. That became a very effective tool for the film and was not a typical style of filming before the movie was made. And by having these shots where you don't actually see the shark that often, but you hear that very spooky music, it was a very effective way to bring the film together, especially after it had a number of production difficulties. The one thing that happened was that they ended up shooting in Martha's Vineyard on location with salt water. Martha's Vineyard is a small town off the northeast coast of the United States. But after just a few, actually within the year of the movie hitting theaters, Universal was actually able to create our version of Amity Island and share it with audiences here. They already caught the shark though, so you guys get to just sit back and relax. Oh, I misspoke. There is still a shark in the water. Goodness.
Also, Colonial Street stood in for Wisteria Lane in the hit television show Desperate Housewives. And the cult classic The Burbs, starring Tom Hanks and Carrie Fisher, was filmed here as well. You can catch a few clips from that project in these bits. urban neighborhoods everywhere across the country honestly across the world so why come to a studio to film in a fake neighborhood great question well you may have noticed in those clips that there's sometimes a fair amount of destruction that happens in the filmmaking process and if you go into someone's personal residence break all their windows and leave they'll probably be pretty bummed Filmmaking also happens at all hours of day and night. So if a film starts, they're set up at 3 p.m. and shoots till 3 a.m., your neighbors might not be too pleased about it. Similarly, we have our wooded area. This is our wilderness road. And you may think, well, there's wooded areas elsewhere. Why don't you just go to the real woods? Well, there are bathrooms most, most closer here. We also have electricity and better security than a general wooded area. Sandra Bullock's film Bird Box on Your Netflix process. did film in our wilderness location, and the Fox television show 911 starring Angela Bassett staged a limousine flip down this road. It's nice having a studio set to do something like that as you have extra safety and you don't need to worry about interrupting anybody's commute. We are now at our second picture car location and this time I want you to think about which car you would take on a road trip. We've got variety in terms of fuel efficiency, like Mr. Bean's Mini Cooper, but we also have Bumblebee from the Transformers series and Dom Toretto's vehicle. But maybe you want to bring all your friends, so you got to bring that double-decker bus. Okay, you got your car. You're on your road trip. It's so fun because you're borrowing a car from Universal, but you've been driving for like nine hours and you need a break. It is time to check into a motel. Perhaps the Bates Motel from Alfred Hitchcock's film Psycho. 12 rooms, 12 vacancies. I mean, can't complain, right? And we have Mother's House at the top of the hill. Oh, and it looks like Norman is in. Interesting. Anthony Perkins actually did a remake of Psycho shot for shot, which is pretty amazing. A few years after the original came out in 1960. Oh, 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 no. Oh, no, 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 no. Norman, no. Watch out in the back, y'all. Oh my goodness. Thank you, Simon. You all should thank Simon at the end of that. He got you out of a sticky situation there. Oh. Well, from one amazing director, Alfred Hitchcock, to another, Steven Spielberg, we are now in the set of War of the Worlds which starred Tom Cruise and had a young Dakota Fanning. 
as a co-star. film of Nope, directed by Jordan Peele. It was, of course, an action-packed film, and we are about to go into an action-packed experience of our own. So, before we even get in there, I'm going to remind you one last time to stay seated through the entire tour and hold on to your personal items, because we are about to visit my family. My fast and the furious family, that is. Here's the situation. International criminal Owen Shaw thinks that somebody on this tour witnessed him commit a crime. So now he's after all of us. So we have been put into the care of Roman, Letty, and Dom, and the team, and they are going to keep us safe. So let's see if we can get a little bit more information. Look, this might be more serious than I thought. 
people. What just happened? This is a secure lock. Who are you? I'll tell you who I am, boy. I'm the reason bad guys use a nightlight. I'm the reason the boogeyman begs his mama to look under his bed. And I'm the reason you just lost control of this whole operation. My name is Special Agent Luke Hobbs of the U.S. Diplomatic Security Service. And as of 16.9 seconds ago, I'm the man in charge. The hell you are. Let me clue you in on two things, sweet cheeks. One... There's a high-value witness from the Federal Protection Program aboard your vehicle. And two, an international crime syndicate led by Owen Shaw is honing in on this vehicle to take that witness out. Shaw's as ruthless as they come, and he'll stop at nothing to eliminate his target. Every living soul on this vehicle is in serious danger. Other than that, enjoy the ride. This is not your jurisdiction. It is now, stink pickle. I'm so tired of you steak guys stepping in just whenever you, you feel like it. Mute him. Don't you. I think Dom will be resting uh, totally safe. But of course, Buddy and Roman could take care of us too. Let's check in with them to see what we need to do next. Hey, yo. They just got here. All right, I got it. But listen, hello, beautiful people, particularly to you right there, missing the third row. How you doing? You good? My name is Roman Pierce. Pleased to meet you. My buddy Hobbs asked us to stash you with Shaw for a while. So we brought you in our secret spot. We're having a few friends over. It's a little messy, but it's all good. The more the merrier. Especially you right there in that third row. You know what I'm saying? So look, see over there? It's Hobbs Urban Assault Vehicle. Best truck the U.S. government can buy. That work of art back over there was made by my man Tej. Think of it as like a Mona Lisa on wheels. So did you bring it down to them? What's that? You had one job to do, and one. All right, look guys, we're gonna keep Shaw from finding you. But to keep you safe, we need your help. We don't want the syndicate tracking us here. So put us one flash or one ringtone and give us away. You know how long I took to hire this shit, man? I'm, I'm not. You're under arrest right now! Hey, let's just, just back up a little bit. I got it. It's like me. First of all, I don't work for you. Oh, really? Well, tell me, Roman, who do you work for? We don't work for nobody. Cop, I suggest you clear out of here, otherwise, we can't guarantee your safety. Guarantee my safety, I'm the one holding the gun. Yeah, but mine's a whole lot bigger than yours. Um, escort this novice out. Let's go, Cookie Puss! That ugly suit on, man. It's cheap. Somebody out there really pissed off Shaw. It's gonna get ugly fast. Yeah, don't worry. Lucky for you, our whole family will protect you. Are you kidding me, Gorman? You didn't shut off your phone, bro? I gotta call you back. I'm just, I mean, I'm just, I mean, See what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. It was on vibrate. Sure, I traced us. I just can't hold it, Buddy, Roman, we're up. <sighs> Trying to move that vehicle. It's about to get real interesting. Get those pretty glasses on. My Mona Lisa's all warmed up right next door. Roman, grab your truck. You and Levy ready to roll. Yeah, look at it! You can do the witness coming up, we call it a day! 
Please have got my stuff a little bit. It's all good. We got food. Y'all held us down. Appreciate it. My family is strong. Thank you. 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 If you felt inspired by that big adventure or anything you saw on the tour today, I encourage you to go home and make a movie. Do it on your phone, with your friends and family, whatever. It doesn't need to be big. You just got to start. The next great filmmaker may be on this tour, and maybe one day we'll all get to see your work. Now, on behalf of myself and everybody here at NBC Universal, thank you so much for coming on this exclusive behind the scenes. Hollywood yeah. tour. We appreciate our pass holders for coming to join us. Many, many thanks. It's always good to see you. If you'd like to become a pass holder, go to the Universal Hollywood box office. Download the Universal Studios Hollywood app to confirm the park closes at 10, see show times for Waterworld, check wait times for rides and attractions, and get details for visiting Super Nintendo World. To purchase the NBC Universal